I am so honored to be here tonight as one of hundreds of thousands of anti-Zionist Jews who proudly join the millions of people around the world rising up in solidarity with the people of Gaza and in solidarity with all Palestinians everywhere struggling for freedom. We refuse to stand by silently as Israel in inflicts unimaginable violence against the 2.3 million people of Gaza who have been under blockade since 2007, the majority of whom are already refugees from the Nakba, as Israel murders thousands of Gazan children, elders, journalists, poets, parents, doctors, teachers, entire families, so many still trapped under the rubble, so many starving, so many ill with no medical care to speak of. We grieve every single life, every single life, a whole world. And it is from this grief that we denounce 75 years of Israeli apartheid and occupation that created the conditions for this crisis. We, with our whole beings, we reject Zionism itself as a racist and colonial ideology. We know that our safety our dignity and our very souls as Jewish people are to be found in solidarity, not in apartheid. In multiracial coalitions against white supremacy, not in coalitions with white supremacists. In channeling our fear and our rage and our grief into movements for justice, not into military superpowers. We will not be used as a moral cover for the oppression of Palestinian people, not in our names. I flew here directly from Washington, D.C., where I had the great honor to support 18 elder Jewish women, the eldest age 81, as they chained themselves to the White House to demand that President Biden call, stop this genocide and call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. These women, many of them older than the state of Israel, many of them children of the Holocaust, many of them who have lived through the horrors of McCarthyite repression, screamed, Biden, you cannot hide. We charge you with genocide. They read the names of Palestinians who have been murdered over the past two months of Israeli bombing and siege, this time starting with the eldest. Multiple 93-year-old Nakba survivors a secret service cut off their chains with bolt cutters. These powerful Jewish women stood with millions around the world who recognized Palestinian freedom as integral to the freedom of all people. While American media tries to characterize the massive growth of anti-Zionism amongst American Jews as merely a marginal position amongst young people, we know better. It is not a generational rift. It is an intergenerational legacy. We are proud to come from generations of Jews who opposed, opposed each and every form of oppression, including Zionism. Be a kid, and everyone deserves the chance to grow old. And for that reason, from our hearts and from our souls, we reject Zionism. Because it has been used as the premise for over 75 years of Palestinian dispossession, exile, and death. Because it tries desperately to conflate Judaism with Zionism, 
when Judaism is our thousands-year-old rich tradition and Israel is a 75-year-old settler colonial apartheid state. Because it's been used to generate wealth for weapons manufacturers, war profiteers, tech companies, and Western military powers. Because it makes freedom chants on college campuses somehow more controversial than an actual genocide that is actually happening before our eyes now. because it has been used to stoke Islamophobia, to criminalize dissent, to break apart social justice movements with false and cynical accusations of anti-Semitism, because it has been used to flatten diverse Jewish lives and traditions and histories and pain and turn them into tools of oppression, because it has been used to harm Mizrahi and Sephardi Jews, separating them from their home countries and cultures, positioning, positioning Palestinian people and Jewish people of Arab descent on the opposite sides of a colonial regime, instead of as neighbors who have lived together for generations. <laughs> 